In this video, we're going to see how to share code that we've written on our local machine to a repository on GitHub. Firstly, let's look at the simplest way to get IntelliJ IDEA to publish code that we've written on GitHub. Let's assume that we've created an IntelliJ IDEA project like this one. This is a Hello World application that we know works because we've seen it run successfully. It's not currently set up with any source control, which we can see in IntelliJ IDEA because there's no option for opening a Git window. And if we go to the terminal, we can see there's no .git folder in the project. We can use IntelliJ IDEA to share this project on GitHub. We can go to the VCS menu and select Share Project on GitHub. If we're not already logged into GitHub via IntelliJ IDEA, we'll be shown a login dialog like this one where we can enter our GitHub username and password. This also provides the option to log in using a token from GitHub, but even if we don't select the option, if we log in with our username and password here, IntelliJ IDEA will generate a GitHub token and use that to log in. If you don't already have a GitHub account, you can use the sign up for GitHub link to create one. If you log in with your username and password, and have two-factor authentication enabled for GitHub, IntelliJ IDEA will pop up an additional dialog asking you to input your authentication code. Once we're successfully logged in, IntelliJ IDEA will ask us what we want to call the repository that we're about to create on GitHub. This defaults to the project name, but we can pick any name for this repository as long as it follows GitHub's guidelines. I'm going to call my repository Hello World Demo as repositories have to have a unique name, and I'm sure I already have a repository called Hello World on GitHub. We can make this repository private if we like. I like to make my repositories public unless there's a compelling reason to make them private. We can rename the remote if we like, but let's accept the default here. We can add an optional description too. This isn't mandatory, but it helps people who want to understand what the project is for. When we press enter or click share, IntelliJ IDEA will go ahead and create that repository on our GitHub profile. The IDE will ask us which files we want to put into this first commit. We could commit everything, but generally we don't need to add the .gradle folder if we're using the Gradle wrapper, and we don't need to add the build folder, which is where IntelliJ IDEA puts the compiler output like class files. Everything else looks good to commit, We'll use the default commit message and press enter to commit it. Under the covers, IntelliJ IDEA is creating a local Git repository for the project and then pushing it to your GitHub profile as a new repository with the details we just entered. When this process is finished, IntelliJ IDEA will pop up a balloon and we can click on the link to see the repository in GitHub in a browser. We can see the repository, the code, the commit message, and the description. Let's go back to IntelliJ IDEA. We can see a Git tool window is now available to us. Since IntelliJ IDEA created a Git repository for this project. We can open this window using the toolbar button, the quick access link, or the shortcut Command 9 on macOS or Alt 9 on Windows and Linux. The Git window has a console log which lets us see the command line output of the Git commands that have been run. This is useful if we're used to using the command line to work with Git. We can see what IntelliJ IDEA executed for us and what the result was. We can also see the log, which gives us a visual representation of the Git status of a project. Here we can see the single commit that was the creation of the GitHub repository from this project, the files that make up the commit, the commit message, and the local and remote branches for your repository. Finally, to get another view on what happened when IntelliJ IDEA shared this project on GitHub, let's go back to the terminal. We can see there's now a .git folder in our project because IntelliJ IDEA created a local Git repository for this project as well as the remote GitHub repository. That's the simplest way to share an existing project to GitHub. Even if it isn't already using Git for source control, IntelliJ IDEA will take care of all of the details for you. 
The last example assumed we want to do everything in a single step. Often, we'll want to create a local Git repository for our project well before we want to publish our code publicly on GitHub. Let's assume we have a more complex project than Hello World and that we're still in the process of writing the code. We don't want to publish this on GitHub just yet, but we do want to enable source control for our project as we want to do small commits locally while we evolve the code. We want to save the progress each step of the way, for example, when the tests are passing. We want to create a local Git repository for this IntelliJ IDEA project. We can see this project is not currently under any source control as there's no Git or VCS tool window. Like most operations in IntelliJ IDEA, there are several ways to enable Git for version control for a project like this. If we go to the VCS menu, we can see there's an option to create a Git repository. We can do this for any folder in our project. We might choose this option if we want to create more than one Git repository for our IntelliJ IDEA project, or if we want to set the root of the repository to be somewhere other than the project root directory. The simplest way to use Git as the version control for an IntelliJ IDEA project is to select Enable Version Control Integration from the VCS menu. IntelliJ IDEA supports multiple version control systems, but for this example, we want to choose Git. IntelliJ IDEA creates a Git repository in the root directory of the project. We also now have access to the Git tool window. If we open this, we can see the console window which shows the Git commands that have been run and their result. Or we can switch to the visual log view. Using IntelliJ IDEA's terminal, we can also see that we now have a .git folder in the root of our project. Now we've enabled Git, but we haven't added anything to source control yet. We can see that our files are shown in red, which means that as far as Git is concerned, these are new files that are not yet added to Git, so they're not in source control. Let's select which files we want to be in source control and make our first commit. We can open the commit window using Command and K or Control and K. This video uses the commit tool window, which was added in IntelliJ IDEA 2020.1. If you're still using the old commit dialog, you can switch to the commit tool window in Preferences, Version Control, Commit, Use Non-Modal Commit Interface. If we open up the unversioned files list in this commit window, we can see all the files in our project are listed here because none of them have been added to Git yet. We probably don't want to add everything to Git. There are some directories and files, like build output files, that we don't need to put under source control. Seeing all the files in a single list like this might not be helpful, so we could opt to group the files, for example by directory or module. With this view, I can see there are two directories that I don't want to add to Git because they're build directories. I do want to add the Gradle wrapper directory, my source, and the files in the root of my project. If I open up the .idea folder, I can see all IntelliJ IDEA settings files. Each team will have their own idea of which settings should be saved into source control, if any. IntelliJ IDEA automatically adds a .gitignore file to this directory with the default folders and files to exclude from source control. We could add other files to this .gitignore file if there are other specific IDE settings that we don't want to include. However, I'm going to add all the other settings files to Git. Let's add a description for this commit so that we know what functionality went into these changes. When we commit this, we get a balloon saying this was successful. And when we go back to the Git tool window, the log shows us this commit. We can see the files that were changed in this commit and the commit message. We can hide the git window by pressing command and 9 or alt and 9 again. At this point we have a question about what to do with the other files we did not add to git. We don't want them in source control, but we also don't want them adding noise to our commit window. We need to ignore these files. We do this in git with a .gitignore file, so let's look at how to create one in IntelliJ IDEA and how the IDE uses it. In the project view, 
we can call up the new menu with Command and N on MacOS or Alt and Insert on Windows. We want to create a new file, which we're going to call .gitignore. Now this project is using Git for source control, IntelliJ IDEA will ask us every time we create a new file if we want to add this file to Git. Usually the answer will be yes, we want to add it. For this .gitignore file, we definitely do want to add this to Git. If we go to the commit window, we can see this .gitignore file is in our default change list as a new file to commit. We can also see our unversioned files, those files in the project we didn't want to commit. Since we will never want to commit the files and directories in these two locations, we'll add them to our gitignore file. IntelliJ IDEA offers code completion in the gitignore file, which makes it less likely we'll make a mistake with the file names or paths. If we either manually save this file, or simply switch the focus of the editor, for example by going back to the commit window, IntelliJ IDEA will apply the changes from the gitignore file, and we'll see those unversioned files disappear from the commit window, now they're being ignored by Git and by IntelliJ IDEA. If we're happy with this change, we can commit this new file to Git. We can see we also get code completion even in the description field of the commit window, which may be useful when we're typing file names. When we open the Git tool window, we can see the second commit. We're starting to see a commit history showing the incremental changes we're making to the project. Let's take a more in-depth look at the options we have when we're committing changes to Git. Let's assume we've made some changes like this. We've added some new functionality and a test for it. Firstly, we can see that changes have been made to the file by the gutter icons. Here we have green to the side of this test, which shows this is all new code that has been added to this file. The files that have been changed are shown in blue in the project window. When we go to the commit window, we can see which files were changed. Remember that we set the commit window to group the files by directory when we created our first commit. For smaller commits like this one, we might find it easier to turn off this grouping so we can see all the files at once. Even in a list like this, we can still see at a glance which are production code and which are test files, since the test files are highlighted in green. If we double click on a file, it opens a side-by-side -side diff in the editor area. This shows the difference between the original file and the newly updated file. In our case, this updated file has four new lines of code shown in green. If we want more space for the diff view, we can hide the commit window. We can navigate through the files that have been changed using the arrows or the keyboard shortcuts. This second file also has new code added, our new test method. Let's open up the commit window again. We can open up the current version of a file rather than the diff by using Command and Down on MacOS and F4 on Windows and Linux. We can also see a summary of the changes under the list of files. In our case, we've changed two files. If we want to see more options for the commit, we can click on the settings icon. This lets us set up the actions that happen automatically when we commit changes. We might want to automatically reformat the code, optimize imports, which also removes unused imports, or make other automated changes. By default, IntelliJ IDEA will analyze the code for warnings and errors and check if any to-do items have been added. If we're disciplined while we're coding and we want a faster commit, we might want to turn these options off. Now let's add a commit message for these changes. If we want, we can see previous commit messages with Control and M, we might want to reuse a past message. So far we've been committing all these changes to our local Git repository. Let's look at how to share this local project on GitHub. When the project is on a remote server like GitHub, then the code is safely backed up to another location. We can see this project only has local branches, which means all the code in the commit history is only saved on this local computer. We can share the project and its history on GitHub by going to Git, GitHub, Share Project on GitHub. I already logged on to GitHub earlier in this video, so I don't need to re-authenticate. I need to give the repository a name. This needs to be a unique repository name for my account. We can rename the remote here if we like. I'm going to keep the default right now because this is the only remote for this repository at this point. 
I can optionally add a description to help others understand what this project is. When we press enter or share, IntelliJ IDEA will create a new repository on GitHub under my account and push this code to that repository. The balloon notification shows when this is complete, so we can click on the link and see the new repository on GitHub in a browser. We can see the code on the project and the three commits that we made locally are now available on GitHub. If we go back to IntelliJ IDEA, we can see the Git log has been updated to show that the remote, origin, is also at this commit. When we expand the remote branches, we can see the master branch under the origin remote. We've seen how to publish our project on GitHub. Now let's look at how to push new changes to our GitHub remote. Let's make another change to this project so that we can commit it and push the new change to GitHub. Let's do the simplest thing and create a readme file for the project. And yes, we want to add this file to Git. Let's fill in the file with some basic information. We'll use the commit window to see which files have been changed and to add a helpful description of the changes. It is possible to commit and push the changes in a single operation, either by using the commit and push button or by using the shortcut Option, Command and K or Control, Alt and K for Windows. When we press this, the changes will be committed locally and the push dialog will be opened. This dialog shows the branch that will be pushed and the name of the remote it's being pushed to. We can decide not to push the changes right now if we want and press Cancel or the Escape key. If we do this, the changes have still been committed locally but not pushed to the remote. We can choose to push our changes at any time by using the shortcut Shift, Command and K or Control, Shift and K. This will bring up the same push dialog we saw earlier. The commits that can be pushed are listed below the name of the branch and the remote, and the files that make up the changes are shown on the right. Push the changes either by clicking on the push button or by pressing Command and Enter. IntelliJ IDEA will push the changes to the GitHub remote. We can see the origin label moves up to this most recent commit, and we get a success notification. If we go back to our browser, we can see these changes have been pushed to GitHub. In this video, we've seen how to create a GitHub repository and local Git repository for an existing IntelliJ IDEA project. We also looked at the basics of how to commit our changes to Git and how to push them to GitHub. Thanks for watching.